following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Not all of the monads in heaven want their self-realization or the liberation for their essences. When an essence, soul, or consciousness in this uh, physical plane is searching for the knowledge, is searching for the way in order to attain self-realization is because the monad inside is making a pressure into its own essence. The essence is the soul or the consciousness and the monad is the spirit. Remember that we have to state not all of the human beings in this planet Earth have soul. When we say soul, I am referring to a hundred percent of human soul within the bodies. Because most of the time what we have inside is the embryo of soul. People used to confuse or to mistake the embryo of soul, which is called in, in Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, is called Buddhata. They mistake the Buddhata with the soul. And they think that the Buddhata is the soul. It's like if we think that the sperm is the physical body. It's obvious that the sperm has the possibility of becoming a human body. So the same is with that that we call essence or buddhata, which normally is bottled up into the ego, into that that we call my anger, my lust, my pride, my vanity, my laziness, my gluttony, my envy, my greed, my hatred, etc. So in this psychological aggregates is the essence, the embryo of soul, but not the soul in a whole, just part of it. The people, because they are lacking of knowledge or experiences, in relation with what is really to have a soul, they think that that embryo is the soul, but it's just the material with which we can create that that we call soul. When somebody possesses the soul, the human soul, then that one is a human being. 
even though for respect to all of the creatures of the earth we call human beings even though when we are not human beings because the word human is from the Sanskrit Hugh the spirit man the mind human someone that is united with the spirit or the mind united with the spirit and being of course there are many types of beings he's referring to the monad which is already having the man into their into its own service so to call somebody human being is to say that that one has the human soul incarnated and in order to incarnate the human soul we have to create soul remember that Jesus in the Gospels he said with patience you will possess your soul it is because we need a lot of patience in order to get that which is the soul in order to create it the soul is electronic and always resides in the sixth dimension which is the causal world part of that human soul is here in this very moment within the ego the embryo of soul the monad that wants self realization is always impulsing the essence the consciousness that embryo of soul in order for that essence or embryo of soul to search for the way in order to incarnate the moon so because the essence is ignorant related with the path related with the way is always committing many mistakes or is just experiencing different ways until finally is entering in the right way for the liberation or self realization which means of course the way in order to unite that embryo with the monad which resides always in the sixth dimension in order to attain the union we find that we need will power that which in greek language we call telema will power without will power is impossible to attain self realization you need will power in order to start to initiate but of course will power is an attribute of the monad will power is related with that statement that we find in the prayer of the lord thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven you remember that prayer of the lord if we analyze that we discover that the earth is of course the physical body and heaven is a sixth dimension where the spirit or the monad of every creature is always dwelling so the will of god which means the performing of all of the laws 
or the affinity with all of the universe in the higher dimensions is always happening in heaven in the sixth dimension it's always harmony in heaven nobody breaks the law because the will of God is always being performed that's why we ask for his will to be performed on the earth or in the earth in this way which is our physical body in order to attain union with the spirit thy will be done on earth on the physical body as it is in heaven but in order to attain that prayer we have to create the body of willpower the body of willpower is that body with which the soul is always dressing in the sixth dimension the body of willpower is that superior mind that we were talking in other lectures the superior mind which is a mind that does not think because is a mind that acts under the direction of the will of God and God knows here on the earth we think we analyze because we do not know but God is God and that's why he knows or he knows because God is androgynous male female through the human soul to the causal body because the body of willpower is also called causal body the will of God is performed on earth so many searchers of the truth or of the self-realization they know that in order to attain the perfect union with God they need to have this telema willpower and they know that when somebody has willpower the body of will this one controls perfectly the physical body starting of course with that energy that we call sexual energy in the ancient times many followers or searchers of the way they knew that the key of the whole transformation was always the sexual energy but they knew that in order to control the sexual energy without willpower is impossible that's why you find that the path the way is always related with chastity so those one that were very concerned with willpower were called fakirs they knew that the physical body the matter was related with the forces of the dragon you hear about the dragon in many stories in the Middle Ages which is always symbolized in many ways the dragon is nothing but the energy that circulates not only in the physical body but in the air in the water in the earth you find the dragon in the trees within any element because because it is the solar energy the solar force when you investigate in the Kabbalistic way the physical body you discover that the physical body is called Malkut which is the kingdom and that the physical body is a mixture of forces as we know that are concentrated forces that enter into the different plexus that we have and also through the mouth what we what we eat through the nose what we inhale or breathe and all of that mixture of forces that we call prana finally is circulating in the blood in the nervous system we have it in the brain we have it of course in the sexual form solar plex etc so that is the dragon fire 
the astral light, the prana of the Brahmanis. And of course, in order to control that dragon or that energy inside, we need the power of will. And uh, the fakirs were always using their willpower in order to control the different organs or members of the physical body, arms, legs, etc., even the hunger. And of course, the main thing was the sexual energy. The real fakir is not those people that you find in India and many other places in Asia that are always performing in front of the people many uh, marvelous things. The real fakir is always on the direction of his guru, teaching him how to control willpower. Problem with them is that they ignore that in order to create willpower, we need to pass before many other initiations. It is true that we need willpower in order to do everything. But just by controlling or using the willpower in order to control the appetite, or the different appetites of the physical body, sexual appetite, for instance, it is good to control it. But it is not enough in order to create the body of will, the causal body, which is that beautiful body with which all of the angels dressed in the causal world in order to do the will of God. The fakir develops the force of willpower very much. And of course, in the way of the fakir, there were many branches, people that were trying to exercise willpower by controlling the, the body in different ways. In Asia and many other parts of that land, you find schools of also called martial arts that with willpower they exercise and they control the energy in order to attain the developing of special techniques with the goal of course of uniting their strength with the strength of God. There are fakirs for instance in India that they stand uh, for hours, days, weeks, months and years in one position without moving. I read for instance in a magazine one fakir that was always with the right arm straight and even a bird was making a nest <laughs> on the hand of that man. He had his disciples because he was in front of a temple. His disciples were washing him, cleaning him and bringing him food. And he was always, you know, with a diaper. He died in that position. He never put his right arm down. Of course, meditating as well, because the fakirs, they have many uh, techniques in order to rest, in order to control the body. And in that position, of course, for weeks, months, and years, he was developing a very strong willpower, because you need a lot of willpower in order to be like that, you know, for a long time. Hmm? But really, he was wasting his time because he never created the causal body, the body of will. Even though he was in chastity, they said what they call chastity, because they, he, he was in abstinence. Because really, sexual abstinence is not chastity. Chastity is the ability of controlling the sexual energy with willpower. But in order to control the sexual energy with willpower, in order to see if you control that, you need to perform the sexual act. 
how we are going to prove if we control the sexual energy if we don't perform the sexual act. That's why it is coming into my mind in this very moment, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he wrote a letter in the Gospel that says, I have the power of abstinence, which means that he controls his sexual energy with willpower because he was already having the causal body. And then he says, but to those that have not that power, I advise to be merry, because it is better to be merry than to get burned. And then he added, but to those that are merry, also I advise you, be like if you were not merry like when you were single. When you were single, like him, you were in chastity or in abstinence, in other words. But now that you are married, keep being in the same way, being single, being in abstinence. So how you're going to be in abstinence if you are married? Simple. Unite yourself with your partner and do not spill the sexual force simple. But without willpower is impossible. Because there are many uh, initiates in the past that when they knew the secret of the developing of the bodies of willpower, they were in abstinence, of course. They were celibate. And they get married, whether they were well, more than men, because the woman, for nature, they are passive. But the man is always active. So when, we, when they were united for the first time with their wives, they were not controlling the, the dragon, and they were spilling. So the secret was to be united in a sexual act for, for hours without thinking in the spasm or orgasm. Always in the will of God, thy will be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven. And then the energy was returning towards it, its own origin in creating inside, of course, a tremendous willpower. The goal was to start creating that willpower from the bottom till the top, which was the causal world. So Paul, of course, was having that power. So he was saying, if you don't have that power, then Mary, because it is better to be Mary than to get burned. It means if you don't have that power, you're trying to control the sexual energy without causal body, without the body of will. The result is that during the night, the men, and some women as well, have that we call wet dreams. And most of the people that are trying to control that energy have wet dreams, so they don't have willpower. Maybe they control the energy during the day, but because the body is accustomed to fornication, it's easy when you are having your dreams to have wet dreams. So the only way is to teach the body, as the fakir is always teaching. The fakir wants to control all the parts of the body in order to exercise uh, willpower on them, on it. Even the pain of lying down on different nails, for instance, you need willpower in order to control your nervous system, in order not to feel the pain. And that is possible. But when you have a causal body, because when you develop the causal body, you develop also different virtues and powers inside. But those powers belong to the spirit, belong to the monad. The problem with uh, fakirs that still exist in many parts of Asia is that they ignore the doctrine in a hundred percent. They just uh, knew about telema, willpower. But here we have to understand that in order to develop willpower, we need to exercise the way of the fakir, which is dealing with the physical world, dealing with society, dealing with our life, and especially when we are having a partner, 
in order to control the energies of the body. Energies that we have within that we call anger, hatred, self-love, pride, vanity, laziness, greed, etc., etc. All of those energies which are false creations of the past come always out with a relationship between two, between three, four, five, etc. When you are working, when you are in a party, everywhere. So how you are going to control those forces? If you don't save the energy, you don't get willpower. So that's the way of the fakir in this uh, way of knowledge, to control yourself, which means your physical body or the energies that are acting through the physical body, mainly the sexual energy. Because the person that does not control the sexual energy cannot control any other one because the sexual energy is the source of all the force that is in the physical body, the synthesis. All the strength of the dragon is there. And if you control the sexual energy, you are capable to control the other rest of the energies in the physical body. Then you will be, of course, a man with telema. That energy, which is called telema, willpower, rises in the spinal column. It's also called love, the energy of love, energy of telema, and it's also called in India Kundalini. But that Kundalini is susceptible, has seven powers or seven degrees. You have to develop the seven powers of telema, Kundalini, in different steps. When somebody develops the seven forces, it's because it has all the willpower inside. That's why the ancient patriarchs or great avatars or, or initiates, they were always with the staff. The staff is the symbol of the spinal column. Because in the spinal column we have the power of telema, willpower. And that's why we need to awake that energy. And the source of the Kundalini or willpower is the sexual energy, which is electronic energy, solar energy, electronic. And the soul, the essence, the consciousness is electronic. We need to create the bodies of solar light, the electronic bodies. We need to create soul need to create willpower. But I repeat, this willpower has different degrees. There is other way. We call the way of the monk. You know that there are other essences or consciousness that know that we need to develop devotion, love for our own spirit. Because as souls, we need the religion. Religion is a Latin word, religare, which means to unite again. It is obvious that we want to unite again the soul with the spirit. And the way in order to have an experience for a while before we attain the real union is the way of the heart, the way of the monk, the devotional way, the emotional way. We need to develop, of course, that emotional aspect. And that's why we pray to our Father which is in heaven. But most of the monks are always single without, uh, or ignoring, I mean, that in order to be a monk, you need a nun, a real monk, you need a nun. And in order to be a nun, you need a monk. A real monk has his own nun. And when we talk about nun, 
is coming into my mind the same letter, the Hebrew letter Nun, because you write in the same way, N U N, Nun, Nun, Nun. That letter Nun is in relation, of course, with the power, the feminine power, the powers of the waters, the fish. That fish which is moving on the waters is the uh, ovum and sperm. When somebody is devoted to his own God and 100%, all of his sexual energy rises up on all of the spinal column to the brain and descends into the heart. And then that one is having, of course, a lot of power, a lot of energy. The ancient uh, mystics, saints of the Middle Ages, they were always in celibacy, transmuting all of the sexual energy with their devotion from the sexual glands towards the heart, normally, because all of their love was directly delivered to their own God, which is always in the heart, because the heart is the altar of God. We have to build an altar in our heart for our own God. So when we are always loving our God here in our heart, we are transmuting the sexual energy. Of course, the best way to preach God is the sexual act. So a real monk is always having his wife. A real nun is always having his, her husband. In that way they are creating the emotional body, the body of devotion, which is called in Christianity our own particular Jesus Christ. Because we have to form Jesus Christ within. Jesus Christ within is the devotional body that we have to create, body related with the heart, that unites our essence with our own God. But that astral body is also called devotional body. Most of the time, the clairvoyants, when they ignore about this doctrine, they think that everybody has astral body. But the reality is that they mistake the ego with the astral body. The ego is molecular, resides, of course, in the fifth dimension, we call astral dimension, related with desire. Desire is, relation, is in relation with the, the forces of the body when somebody is a slave of the forces of the body, especially this, the emotional center for the grand sympathetic nervous system. But when somebody has astral body, this one controls its emotions. It's not a slave of emotions or inferior emotions. Most of the time people say, oh, this is a person which is cold. It's a person that can smile, but is not a slave of laughing to be crazy with a lot of frenzy when you are laughing you have to control it sometimes can be sad but not desperate because he's always controlling its emotions because he is or she is delivering all of the emotional force to God this person does not allow them the ego or desire to take that force out from its own monad because this person wants to develop the astral body and in order to develop the astral body you need to love because here in the heart love people think that to love is something different of sexuality but they ignore that the energy of sex is the same energy of love which rises up. When that energy is going down, satisfying animal desires, it's not love, it's just passion. 
somebody really love in, 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 in his heart, he knows that God is love, and that energy has to be rise in order to feed that love. And this is how you develop the powers of the heart. The Master Samael on the Ord tell us that when we investigated the saints of the Middle Ages, male and females, they were in sexual abstinence. But in their past lives, they were practicing the Saha Maituna, or what we call the sexual magic with their respective partners in order to develop the power that they had when they were saints. And of course, they were having all of the bodies already, and that's why they were in celibacy. But it's an absurdity to be in celibacy when we don't have the solar bodies. We have to create them. Saint Cupertino of Italy, when he was praying to his own divine mother in his heart, he was in front, of course, of the symbol that was the Virgin Mary. And praying there, and at the same time, imagine that she was inside of his heart. Because each one of us has his own divine mother and father. Suddenly, being in that attitude, devotional attitude, he was screaming with a lot of voice. And then he was floating in the air, levitating, very high, sometimes reaching the ceiling of the cathedral of Italy and then descending like magical. The other monks that were amazed were asking unto him, why do you cry before levitating? And he says, it's because in the same way that the gunpowder explodes in the container when you light the match. In the same way, when you are praying and you are feeling love in your heart, that love, that energy reaches the heart and explodes. And in order to liberate that energy that you are holding, I had to scream because I am feeling a lot of love in my heart. means the emotional center is overloaded with prana. But when you are in a that emotional state, then you need to scream in order to liberate the energy. That's why it is written that Christ is that that unites our physical personality with our Father in Heaven. But that Christ is the astral body, the emotional superior body that you create when you really love. And that body is electronic because it's created with a sexual energy which is electronic energy when you really learn how to love. The Gnostic also develops the emotional center. That's why we have in our school religion, but not fanaticism. Knowing that religion is to unite again in different steps, in different levels, our consciousness with our spirit. Most of the people in these times, they have developed the intellect, very strong intellect, and their hearts are very weak. There's no fire there. And that's why they are lacking of experience in the internal planes. Because without the powers of the heart, it's impossible to experience the astral plane, mental plane, causal plane, and other planes. We can talk about satirism or occultism, religion, philosophy, etc. But it's better to experience that directly with our consciousness if we develop the powers of the heart. And the best way to develop the powers of the heart is by loving somebody with all of our hearts. 
but without committing the crime of abusing of the sexual energy because we need willpower. It's in the moment of the sexual act when the souls are proved, tested. If they really love God for their desires and passions. When a person ignores all of this, most of the time entering in the way of the monk, thinking that only by preaching or by praying they will reach God without knowing that the real energy that takes us into the house of God is the sexual energy. When they are in abstinence without creating the astral body inside, what they create is the poisoning of spirits, vibrations, which are negative vibrations that are feeding the ego of pride of that particular psychological aggregate that we call the Pharisee, that particular aggregate or psychological ego that feels that is good, holy. Like in the Middle Ages, I told you, the monks of the Middle Ages that were very holy and killing people in the bonfire in the name of God. That is the interior Pharisee. This is what we developed when we are following a particular religion without knowing about the reality of devotion. Because we think that God is outside without knowing that God is inside as an energy. God is a creator. And as a creator resides in our body. But also the dragon is there, tempting us to satisfy desires. So it is good. Any religion is good if we know how to love. If we know that the fires of the heart control the fires of the sex, if we know how to love really. The other way is the way of the yogi. The way of the yogi is related with the mind. We know that we need to control the mind, develop the powers of the mind. Because really, the synthesis of the power of the mind resides in Om. Remember that, that mantra, Om, is for clairvoyance. That mantra develops the clairvoyance. A real yogi is that one that has mental solar body. We need to create solar mind. There are many students of yogism, but they think that to be a yogi is to stand on the head or to touch your head with your foot or to do contortions they confuse it. They think that yoga is Atha Yoga. Atha Yoga is good for elasticity of the physical body. But a real yogi is that one that controls his mind. In order to control the mind, we need to know Nana Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, Raja Yoga, all the yogas especially Tantra Yoga. But in this time, people are entering in different schools that we find of yoga, and they ignore that the brain is a vehicle of the mind, the physical vehicle of the mind, and that the brain is not in activity 100%, only 3%. Only he who has, or she who has, mental body can utilize 100% of the brain. In order to utilize 100% of the brain, we need to have control in the pineal gland, pituitary gland. Remember that the pituitary gland here is in relation with the clairvoyance, the Achna chakra, and the pineal gland with the chakra Sahasrara, the crown chakra. These two chakras 
gives to the mind a lot of power, but it's impossible to develop those chakras if we do not control the sexual energy. Scientifically speaking, we know that in medicine, the doctors know about the influence of the pineal gland in the ovaries or in the testicle. The pituitary gland and the pineal gland exercise control in the developing of the sexual glands. The hormones of the sexual glands are very important in order to have a very strong pineal gland. If you are not in chastity and you are trying to awake powers of the mind, what you develop is evil powers, subjective powers, negative powers, like hypnotism and many other faculties that are related with the infra dimensions. But the real powers of the mind are related with the solar mind. To have powers with the ego alive in the mind, because the mind is the head, is the, the den of defects. We have to clean our mind. A real yogi is always in meditation, because the meditation is the technique of the mind. But not meditation just in order to attain a shamari. Daily meditation in order to annihilate the ego. In order to control all of the matter, which is the physical body. The mind is controlled with willpower as well. The whip is a symbol of willpower with which we have to whip the donkey, which is the mind. And to transform that donkey into man, into a human being, is difficult. A real yogi also knows that 100% uh, of control of the mind is possible only by the awakening of the kundalini, only by putting the sexual energy to the mind, ojas in Sanskrit. A real yogi is always being prepared with his own particular yogini. And they, of course, in order to control the mind, they put their bare backs for a space of time and they meditate, being nude. And when they reach the tranquility of the mind, they turn the woman sits on the legs of the man and absorbs his sexual organ and like that they are in an attitude for hours without thinking in the sex in order to attain 100% of power in the mind in order to reach that level of course we need to control a lot of sexual force and then we have a lot of power in the mind that is a real way of the yogi. And of course, they vocalize their mantras for the different chakras when they are united. They know that the sexual energy, which is the Kundalini, which is in the Muladhara chakra, nourishes the different chakras. And with the power of the mind, they project the energy to the chakra Ajna, to the chakra Vishuddha, to the chakra Anahata, to the chakra Manipura, etc., etc., while they vocalize the different mantras when they are united. So when they withdraw from the sexual act, instead of spilling the sexual energy and wasting a lot of force, all of that energy is already in the chakras. And that's why they are having a lot of power. There are yogis in India that they can walk on the fire, or yogis that can go down into the river and stay for hours there under the water without breathing. Milarepa, the great yogi in Tibet, he was capable of flying. So the case of Milarepa is something very special because he was having a special initiate in order to transmute his sexual energy, a dakini, 
you know what is a Dakini? A Dakini is a female master of the astral plane. When somebody is prepared, a Dakini, female master, is coming into the yogi and help the yogi to transmute the sexual act, I mean the sexual energy, in the sexual act. But in order to get the right of having a Dakini, you have to annihilate a lot of ego and to have a lot of control in your mind. As well, the woman can have a male Dakini. In these times, what men and women have are not Dakinis. Male Dakinis, neither female Dakinis, but incubus and succubus, which are lustful aggregates of, of lust that we have that assault the dreamer in order to fornicate, which is the opposite. It's really, really the opposite of that. So also we have to mantralize, to perform a lot of exercises and mantras in order to awake our inner powers. But the best way, of course, is in the sexual act. Without committing adultery, because it has to be between the couple that love each other because those that are fooling around, they don't awake anything. We have to be serious in this matter. So the Gnostic is living the way of Fakir, or walking the way of the Fakir, is walking the way of the Yagi, walking in the way of the monk, and in the fourth way, which is the Thao way. The Thao way is for those that after knowing all of these three ways they are working with Kabbalah and alchemy that's the fourth way the fourth way synthesizes all of the three ways we don't need to go to the mountain in order to be a yogi we can live the, we can live the, the way of the yogi in the city in the fourth way because we have the practices. What we need is only a partner, somebody that is serious, that is not going to be with us for a week, for a month, or for a year, no, forever. Someone that wants to share the forces, really, of the heart, of the mind, of the body. And of course, the Tao way. We don't need to go into a monastery for all our lives in order to be in the monk, the way of the monk. We can develop that by living in the city as well. Because in the city is how we develop the way of the fakir. By fighting always with society in our home, in our work, in society. Always people telling us, you are crazy, get out of there, come with us. And then you have to develop willpower in order to stay in your path without getting out. Because there are many temptations out there. Money, sex, alcohol, drugs. So staying on the path without leaving it is very difficult. It's not easy. You need willpower. So the synthesis of all of this is willpower. There are many people that listen the, the fourth way. Because when we walk in the fourth way, we are developing all of the powers of the yogi, all of the powers of the monk, all of the powers of the fakir. And then we are in a whole going directly to our own monad, attaining self-realization. But the fourth way, which is this Gnostic way, is not easy, of course. But we have a lot of tools. And one of those tools is, are the runes. We need to develop willpower. We need to practice the runes. There are two runes that we need to know in order to develop willpower. The rune T I R Tir, which is a form of an arrow going up. And the other rune is the the rune Thorn or Dorn develops willpower. We need to practice those runes every day. 
in order to have willpower to do our work, our psychological work, our esoteric work, because there are a lot of temptations out there that not allowed us to work. We have always excuses. Oh, I am tired. I'm sleepy. Oh, I have to do this and that. So always we have time for the outside duties, but never for our inside duties. So in order for us to remember, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, so we have to do the, the ruins of willpower. So standing, we put our arms together straight up our, upon our head, and then we descend our hands, making a shell of each hand, like trying to trap the prana, which is in the atmosphere, and descending, forming the arrow with our body. And then we vocalize the mantra The letter T fits the consciousness. The I is always vibrating in the pituitary gland, the prana, and the R circulates that energy in all the blood because the R is a mantra of the fire. Inri, Ra, Rudra, the god of fire. But vocalizing in that way as many times we can. And then we developed Christic atoms of higher voltage in order to develop willpower. And then the ruined thorn or thorn. You put also your body straight standing and you put your your hand on your and your hip on the left. And then you vocalize the mantra concentrating in your willpower. Ta te ti to Two. as many times you can this, you vocalize the five vowels always ta te ti to tu if you do that every morning let's say seven times at least every day you will develop a very strong willpower in order to do what we have to do the different practices and exercises that we have to perform. Also we have the other ruin, which is bar. We can combine the ruin bar with the ruin tear in order to attract all of the forces, as you know, the solar prana with the ruin tear, and deposit that into the consciousness with the ruin bar. And then you vocalize T and when you reach the arrow sign you form the B with your body. You make bend with your leg, you make the other B. Bar. And then again Bar. Tir bar. These are two runes in combination in order to develop, I repeat, willpower. Because we need a lot of discipline. Remember that the fourth way, the Tao way, is when we learn Kabbalah. And Kabbalah is very profound knowledge, alchemy, when we learn how to annihilate the ego. Because we have to annihilate the ego. We are very concerned with our defects, vices, errors that we have within. Without the annihilation of the ego, 
vices, errors, and defects that we have within, we are just wasting our time. Man, know thyself, and you will know the universe. When I said, man, know thyself, I'm not referring to the male, because man is manas, mind, somebody that is working with the mind, the man. And the man could have skirt or pants. I know many men with skirts, female that are in shapes. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy.